chapter that is cell now cell is the basic unit of our life living organism when we have a building a house a brick is joined together to form the house same way human body or any body of a living organism is consisted or made up of cells it is the basic structural unit and functional unit of life now cells we have there are different types of cells uh cells in this chapter we are going to learn what is a cell the functions of the cell different parts of the cell and we uh, also are going to learn about how microscope was discover uh, invented and also the cell theory how cell division takes place you are going to study, uh, study in in little uh, i mean uh, little bit and also what are what is the necessary for this cell division so this is actually the basic of biology we can say so in this first let us come that we can have organisms as unicellular and multicellular now we divide this according to the number of cells if a if an organism is made up of only a single cell we call it as unicellular we have lot of examples like amoeba bacteria mycoplasma euglena paramecium there are many examples they are all unicellular plants and animals or unicellular organisms then we go to another type that is just the opposite that is multicellular in this multi the word multi means many and so what happens is this organisms they are consists of many cells and in this you have examples the ones which you see all around human beings mango tree banyan tree cat tiger dog etc etc so we divide an organism into two ways according to cell unicellular the word uni means one and we have multicellular that is your means many now this uh, how the cell was discovered how it was uh, found out now there was this scientist called anton van leeuwenhoek he was a dutch scientist and he used to work in a spectacle company and what happened is he used to work with lenses so what happens he mixed lot of lenses of high power which he used to magnify things and he used to see things out of curiosity and he made a microscope which is called simple microscope why it is called simple because it uses only one single lens of high power and this simple microscope that he made is now we generally use as your hand lens or magnifying glass years went by he saw many things under it he saw these living organisms in pond water and many other things years went by and then came a scientist english scientist called robert hook he saw he also made a microscope but he made a compound microscope a compound microscope means a microscope which has two lenses he used two lenses so that the image that he saw or the product, or the organism that he saw the things that he saw was magnified double and he saw a slice a thin slice of a cork and he saw some compartments over there hexagonal compartments six sided compartments and in that the those compartments they were empty and he call them as cell so he was the first one to coin this term cell so robert hook did two things one is that he coined the term cell and he invented compound microscope now we come to the cell so this was how the instrument was made to see the cell now we come to what is a cell the if we define the cell it comes to as the structural and functional unit of life it is the structural and functional two very important word unit of life why it is structural because cells join to give the structure of an organism and it is functional because whatever a living organism does all the life processes is actually takes place in the cell like you have digestion like you have reproduction like you have excretion all these things are actually taking place inside a cell 
Now a cell can be divided into three parts. We have the cell membrane that is the covering of the cell and inside the cell membrane you have a substance, a jelly like substance called cytoplasm and then you have a nucleus. So these are the three parts of a cell, the cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. Now the cell membrane is the covering of the cell. It is made up of lipid, carbohydrate and protein. Mainly it is made up of lipid and protein. And so what happens is it is flexible. It is not uh, hard, it is flexible and it can adjust. It gives shape to the cell also. This is a work of it, it gives shape to the cell. It has got many pores in it so that things from inside the cell can go outside and from outside things from another cell can come inside. So these pores act as a gateway or a door for exchange of materials. Now this cell membrane is uh, what you call is found in both plant cell and animal cell. So in this diagram that I have drawn over here, I have drawn over here the animal cell and this is the plant cell and you can see the cell membrane is written in both the cases. So it is found in all types of cells. Now apart from this, in case of plants, they have an additional extra covering, okay, protective covering that is the cell wall. It is a hard rigid substance made up of cellulose. The cellulose is non-living, so the cell wall is non-living. And we find this, this uh, cell wall only in plant cell. It is a striking feature in plant cell. It differentiates between an animal cell and a plant cell. Now the function of cell wall is definitely as it is protection, it gives shape to the cell. It adds rigidity to the plant because plants don't have bones like structure in their body yet the plant is standing straight. So this is an, a feature which gives support to the plant so that it can stand straight or it gives the hardness to the plant body. Next we come to is your cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is nothing but it is a jelly like substance that is filling the space, the matrix of the cell. It is completely that this jelly like substance wherever it is there is nothing is present actually cytoplasm is present. It is a very important uh, part of the cell because all life functions take place here. That means if uh, digestion has to take place, it will take place in the cytoplasm. If reproduction has to take, take place, that is cell division, it will take in the cytoplasm. Uh, when you, we need to for respiration, it will start in the cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is the place where all life functions take place. Then the next part we have is the nucleus. The nucleus is called the boss of the cell. Why? 